They say that staying in one place for too long is not good for our mental or physical health. As humans, it's in our nature to travel. Breaking free from our comfort zones allows us to heal so much of our burdens. It's bigger than my house. People don't really realize that travel is the most organic of medicines. That's why leaving for a day in Kobe, Japan was absolutely invigorating. Kobe is the home of none other than Kobe beef, the finest beef on this planet. But little do people know, when you come to Kobe to try the beef, you need to get a little bit of history, nature, and culture to make that Kobe beef taste even better. We arrived at San Nomiya Station after taking a three-hour train ride from Tokyo to Kobe. I heard from you guys that Akashiyaki is a must-try in this region. Okay, so I'm headed to lunch right now. We're going to try some Akashiyaki. It's like takoyaki. Um, it's more soft. It's not as hard. I've never had it before. Yeah, I'll let you know how it tastes. Akashiyaki is similar to takoyaki, except it's made with egg and not flour. It's basically an egg dumpling. This is how you eat akashiyaki. It's so funny. It looks delicious. Look how much there is. Oh my god, I don't know if I can eat all this. Whoa. It's so difficult to pick up. Inside is octopus served with a side of bonito broth soup to dip it in. It was so difficult to pick up because it was so soft and fluffy. This could be a very good breakfast food. <laughs> the shop we went to was called Taco An, and it's quite close to the station. I'll link everything down below, so check it out. <laughs> After lunch, we headed towards Kitano Museum. It's also known as Kitano Ijinkan. The museum is up in the mountains, and to get there, you have to pass a street filled with western-style buildings and old houses. Okay, so I'm walking to Kitano Museum, and Kitano Museum is mostly full of houses that were built in, 18, in the 1860s, also during the World War. It's very quiet here, but the architecture of all these buildings are absolutely amazing. I want to live here so bad. The Starbucks building in Kobe was extra cool. The building itself was built in the 1900s and it gave off a very homey vibe. The building has authentic antiques with two floors to choose from when looking for a place to sit. Each room had its own unique spin on it. You can get your own Kobe mug or tumbler when you come here and it's highly recommended that you do because you can't get this anywhere else in Japan. After the coffee break, I finally made it a little farther up the mountain, reaching the museum. So I am at Kitano Museum, which is basically a montage of American-style homes. They have a few houses here that were built back in the 1800s and a few houses here that were built back in World War II. We're gonna walk around and see what we can find. This museum dates from the early Meiji period and Taisho period and was built after Japan opened itself up as a treaty port in 1869. So you have to take off your shoes before you go in anywhere. This pastel green house is the Moegi house. It was built in 1903 by the American vice consul. It's bigger than my house. <laughs> Kobe has the best preserved old homes, and these homes were built to allow Westerners or Europeans to feel at home while in Japan. You can't touch anything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Behind the village is a flight of stairs leading to Tenman Shrine. It has a great view of Kitano Museum and Kobe City itself. The views from above were so stunning, and it made me feel so connected with Japan. I don't know about you, but whenever I visit shrines like these, that's how I feel. Another cool thing that you can do here is get your fortune told by water. I'm gonna try. Pay 300 yen and you can dip a piece of rolled up paper into the water to reveal your fortune. I got Daikichi, which is the best fortune! This is the third time I got Daikichi this year. Rub the noses of the animal statues you see around the area to bring good luck. Is 
So I'm at this cute cafe right now and you can get pancakes and waffles and all sorts of things. The Yudoku house was one of the houses I really wanted to see. It was stunning and it looked like a castle. It was built for the rich foreigners back in the day and it means fish scales due to the architecture of the mansion. What is this? <laughs> Next to the Yuroko house is a museum of art created by European artists. You can tell it was a little bit trippy. A standing giraffe. This is what I came here for. The last thing I saw on this day trip to Kobe was Ikuta Shrine. It's one of the oldest in Japan and built in the 3rd century AD. If you're lucky, you'll see a lot of weddings here. People literally drop everything to take a peek at the ceremony. <laughs> Where's the parents? <laughs> Our final stop and the reason we came here was for the Kobe beef. Of course, you have to come here to eat Kobe beef. The most famous restaurant in Kobe is called Misono, and its history and delicious meat is what drives the customers in. Misono opened in 1945 due to the large amount of foreigners in the area after World War II. It was the first to serve teppanyaki style cuisine, which is a style of Japanese cooking using an iron griddle. Are you familiar with Benihana in the US? The owner of this restaurant opened Benihana in various locations across America. Cool, right? The view from your seat is gorgeous. You can see all of Kobe and it's especially beautiful at night. So I suggest you book a reservation during the evening. Okay, so I'm at Misono right now and this is where you can get really good Kobe beef. I'm gonna try some of the, Ko some of the Kobe beef today and I'll tell you guys how it is. I ordered fukudu, which is like a type of sake that you can get here at any uh, misono chain restaurant. So basically you just pour it into the glass like this when you have sake in Japan. So this is something that you don't do anywhere else. So just pour a little bit. We started our course meal with some roast beef salad and shrimp brain. Mmm, yummy. But all the meat here was really tender and juicy. I'll never know how they got it perfectly cooked. Okay, so this is actually shrimp brain. It doesn't look gross or anything. It sounds gross, but it's not gross. It's actually very delicious. Next was our grilled fresh vegetables, and when I say fresh, they were fresh. Best grilled vegetables I had in a long time. Eat these vegetables with the sauce they give you at your table and a little bit of salt, pepper, and mustard to draw out more flavor. Misono was the first to think of putting a cap on top of their food while it cooks to make everything juicy and flavorful. So this is Kuroge Wagyu. It's a black haired cow. So you can actually get this in supermarkets. I've seen this before, it's very expensive. Um, so I'm gonna try it today. This is garlic. It looks delicious. So you put some of the garlic on the meat. Mmm. The garlic is really crunchy. The meat is so tender. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> The time has come. I'm going to try Kobe beef for the first time. So good. It's very tender, lots of flavor, just like the other one. It's definitely worth everything that you pay for here. At this point, I was so stuffed but they gave me some garlic fried rice and soup from the shrimp brain I had to finish off the meal. I just got more food. 
I've never had so much food in my life. Just drink the soup, you don't eat the actual shrimp. Mmm, that's really good. It has a very subtle taste. Warms the stomach after you eat a lot. Our final destination was dessert with a mango and vanilla ice cream with cheesecake. So we have ice cream, vanilla, and mango. <laughs> I think. <laughs> you guys should definitely come here. I highly recommend it. It's really great. It's a good thing to put on your bucket list. I hope you enjoyed my one day travel guide to Kobe. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button to get notifications when I upload as well as sign up for my mailing list on lovelesskelly.com for more lifestyle and travel content. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time!